Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be running through an easy way of configuring your Broadlink Pro and Broadlink Beans, one of the most annoying and yet helpful devices you can install into your smart home. So firstly, what is a Broadlink Pro or Broadlink Bean? So simply put, it's a device for transmitting RF or infrared signals that can be picked up by other devices that would normally be receiving them from a remote control. For instance, to control your TV, you'd normally pick up your TV remote and change the channel. Likewise, this Broadlink can emulate the RF signals that come out of your remote control to control your TV directly and hence allowing Home Assistant to emulate this to control your TV or any other infrared device. Similarly, this device can control RF signals such as ceiling fans. In fact, the Broadlink can control the majority of such non-smart devices that are controlled through infrared or RF remotes through the emulation of this transmission to these devices. Although there are a few exceptions though that you should note. Some air conditioning and garage doors, for instance, encode their signals. For these types of devices, you need to control them via an alternative method. For the garage doors, I'd suggest the Miro's Smart Garage Door Opener Remote, links in the description below. And for air conditioning systems that cannot have their remotes learned and played back, I'd recommend the Cielo Breeze Light which has the functionality of knowing all of the codes associated with the various different air conditioning systems and being able to play back those encoded messages back to the air conditioner to control it. So the next question we have to ask ourselves is, why is this device so useful? So devices are becoming smarter and the majority of the devices that you buy these days have a level of smartness built into them with their connecting through into the Wi-Fi and connecting through internet. My personally, I have 70 odd Wi-Fi devices now connected into my network. However, we all have legacy old devices lying around the place or some cheaper devices also lying around the place that we'd like to control within our smart home. For the purposes of the example, for instance, I have a small heater that is controlled by an infrared remote control. We'll run through a test of how we can integrate that with Broadlink to be able to control it through Home Assistant. So as you can see in the insert, there are many different Broadlink devices. They all fall into two different categories though. There's the Pro versions, and the Pro versions control infrared and RF, and there's also the smaller Bean versions. The Beans control just via infrared. As the Pro versions control RF as well, RF signals can penetrate through walls. So you might want to test having a single RF device that might be able to control multiple different rooms within your house. First off, let's set up the Broadlink app. Links in the description to the Broadlink app that you require from iOS and from Android. I'll skip through this relatively quickly because it's quite straightforward. As you can see from the insert, I already have a Broadlink Pro 4 and a Bean already set up, but we're going to set up another one for the example. From the home screen, we're going to press the plus button in the top right hand corner. Then we're going to add a device. The device we're going to be adding, we'll say add a new device, a universal remote control. In this case, we're going to do an RM4C Mini. If it's not flashing three times, and then with a pause, and then flashing three times again, you might need to reset your device. To do this, push a paperclip into the hole at the back of the device next to the power supply in. Continue to hold until the lights and the LEDs go off. Once the LEDs are off, you can release the reset button. Wait until the LEDs are flashing again, and it will assume the pattern of three flashes, gap, three flashes. Now your device is in pairing mode, you can continue forward. Move to settings and select Broadlink. Once you've selected the Broadlink from your settings, press done. Set your permissions just by pressing done. Go forward and enter your SSID and your Wi-Fi password. The system will go off now and it will connect to your network and do various authentications and verifications to the Broadlink servers. Now your device is actually set up, but it hasn't been named at this point in time. Select the device, join a room, 
In my case, it's going to be study. Name your device appropriately. In my case, study bean. And you're done. The device is now ready to use. Now there's only one further thing that we're required to do. Press the three dots in the top right hand corner, press property. Unclick the lock device. It will save that. Once unlocked, it will drop you back to the add application screen. And we're finished with the mobile phone. So now we need to move across into Home Assistant. So back in Home Assistant. At the time of recording, we're running on 2023.8.2. We're going to add in the Broadlink application so that we can link through to our Broadlink bean. So we're going to cross the moon to settings. We're going to go into integrations and we're going to go and add an integration. We're going to search for Broadlink. Now, the host ID here is the IP address of the actual bean that is connected to your Wi-Fi. You'll have to go into your router to find out the IP address of your Broadlink device. Once you've found the IP address from your router, type in the IP address. No need to change the timeout. Press submit. As you can see, because I've run through this once already, it's remembered the name of study bean, but yours will come up with the device name. Press submit. Put it into a location. Press add and finish. We can now see that the Broadlink integration has one device called Study B, which is what we want. Next, we're going to move across into developer tools. We're going to go into services and we're going to type remote. As you can see, there's a remote learn command. This is the one we need. We're going to go to the choose entity. We'll choose our bean. We'll tick device. Now, the device is the name of the device we're going to be controlling, which is usually the remote control that we're going to be using. The command is what we are going to be controlling, which is a specific button on the remote control. So for this one, we're going to type power. The type is going to be an infrared. We don't need to worry about these ones at the bottom. The alternative is used for when a specific button has multiple messages that are sent from it. For instance, if a power button is pressed and to turn on a device, but if you press the power button again, it sends a different message out to turn the, some, a device off. We won't be using that. This is a very simple remote control. The timeout period will leave alone as well. Now we need to test it. As you can see from the insert, when we press the call service button, the light turns on on the beam. Now, if we have the remote control and we hold, press down the power button on it, you can see that the light turns off after it flashes. This means that the power button infrared signal has been recorded. This is a good time to mention that the device name here and the command name are very specific. You need to make a note of these and record them down on a piece of paper. However, everybody's human. If you do forget that piece of paper or lose it, then you need to be able to go and find these details out. So let's go through and find out how we find these from inside of Home Assistant. So to be able to find these device and commands inside of Home Assistant, we're going to have to utilize the file editor. To install file editor, we need to be able to go into settings, add-ons, add-on store, and then we should be able to find file editor, or we can search for it. Selecting file editor, press install. We do need to do some configuration for this one. Press the configuration tab. Inside the Git section here, we need to remove this one for dot storage. Scroll down, press save. Go back into info and start. Open web UI. We press the folder in the top left hand corner. We should be able to see a dot storage. If we go into this, we'll find the Broadlink remote. Make sure it's the one with the codes on the back end of it. You should be able to see now the name of your device and the command that you use to record. If you record multiple commands, they will be listed below here, but they'll all be associated with the device. Now let's go and test our power command. If we go back into file editor and we go to development tools, we go to services at the top. Inside of services, we type remote, scroll down, until you see send command. We're going to pick our broad bean from the entity list. We're going to pick a device. 
remembering that it is case specific. Study underscore heater. We're going to pick a command, which in our case was power. We're not going to repeat the command. We'll come back to that later on. We're not going to put any delays and we're not going to hold for any amount of seconds. Now we press our call command, we'll see that the heater will start up. Now we've learned our power command. Let's add one extra one in there. Remember, we don't need to change the device name because it would be the same. It's the same remote that we're recording from. But let's change the command to temperature. On this specific remote, it has a single button that alters the temperature and increments it up in single degrees. It goes starts at 35 and goes all the way to 45 and then reverts back down to 15 and then increments back up again. So we've only got on one button that we can utilize for temperature to adjust between 15 and 45. Let's call our command again and record. Now the command has been recorded for temperature also. So now we have two commands for the study heater remote control that have been recorded. And now we need to be able to control those ones using Home Assistant. To be able to do this, we're going to utilize this script function inside of Home Assistant. And to be able to trigger it, we're going to use a button card. So to be able to set up our script, we're going to move back into settings. We're going to go into automations and scenes. We're going to go into scripts. We're going to add a script, create a new script, we're going to give it an icon, radiator, single mode, and we're going to give some actions. Actions are going to call services. And since we're replaying the remote control, we're going to go for remote and we're going to send. We're going to select our bean. We're going to select device and using case sensitive, exactly as we wrote before, study heater. We're going to put in our command, which is power, to turn it on. We're not going to repeat the command. We're not going to delay seconds, and we're not going to have a hold. However, we're going to put in another action. We're going to set a remote. We're going to send a command. We're going to select our bean. We're going to select our device. This time, our command is going to be called temperature. We're going to have no delay on the seconds and no hold seconds. However, we are going to repeat this. Remembering that our heater starts off at 35, goes up to 47, and then comes back to 15. And we want it to get to a desired temperature of 20 degrees. So we're going to repeat this 17 times. And we're going to save our script. So this is great news. We now have a script that we can utilize and run to be able to turn our heater on and then cycle through the temperatures to be able to reach the desired temperature of 20 degrees. So let's try it out. Three dots in the top right hand corner, run script. Should be heard in the background, the beeping noise. And on the insert, you'll see that the, the heater is turned on and now it is cycling through the various temperatures to reach the desired temperature of 20 degrees. So let's test this out as a button. OK, so I've got a dashboard that I've created called Heater Control. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to go into the Add Cards, and I'm going to create a button. On the entity, I'm going to look for my script, which was called Study Heater On. And now I have my button. If I save my button, come out of Done, press the button. If you watch the insert, the heater turns on, cycles through the temperatures, and reaches the desired temperature of 20 degrees. We now have a fully functional button. We can likewise, we can build different scripts for different functionality. Or alternatively, we can build scripts for individual uh, function of service calls to emulate the buttons that are on our remote control. The sky's the limit. So to sum up, Broadlink RM Pro 3, 4, Bean, various different options associated with it. Great device for controlling legacy IR devices or RF devices and can be integrated through into Home Assistant to provide all functionality with the exceptions of air conditioning and garage doors if they're encoded signals. Links in the description below. However, all of us have those legacy and old devices around the house or cheap and simple devices. This is where it's aimed at. I hope this guide has actually provided you with the details to be able to automate those such devices and to be able to get them online so that you can make those home assistant automations. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you liked the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, ding that bell and tell you when the next video is coming out.
See you on the next one.